something that can help to do that. Genetic engineering is just the use of procedures, technologies, and scientific methods that permit direct manipulation of genetic material and hereditary, hereditary, hereditary traits. Sorry, it's hard to pronounce. pronounce it. um, so basically, it can go straight into whether if your baby's in this embryo, let's say for example, if you have AIDS, right? They can go into the, into, go right into the DNA of that baby Find the nucleotide that has the or the or the gene that contains the AIDS virus, take it out and replace it with a new nu nucleotide, and then that baby won't have AIDS. It's something that a lot of scientists have been working on, and it's something that might be available in the future. So my thesis is that whether genetic engineering is moral or immoral, it might be able to benefit the world when the time comes necessary. Because there's two sides to this to this um, topic. There's some people who feel that being able to do that is like playing God. Other scientists feel that by being able to do that, you can benefit the world. We'll get into it later on throughout the slideshow. So my first um, side of genetic engineering will be genetically engineered food. I want to call that blue strawberry a blueberry, because it's blue strawberry. <laughs> so the thing is, when, you, when you're able to go into genes of food, because everything that, everything that has life has a DNA, when you go into genes of food, you can change it. You can change the color, just like as in a person, you can change the color of their eyes. Something that becomes useful when you just want to have your children to have blue eyes instead of brown eyes, or if you want something like that. Genetically engineered food is really um, useful to pharmacists and scientists because when you create plants that are genetically modified, you can produce vaccines that you can inject into patients. You can produce pharmaceuticals and pharmaceutical raw materials, which can use by pharmacists to make the medicine that you buy at the local pharmacies, like Advil or you know ibuprofen stuff like that. As you can see here, this is also a chart showing how much we've, we've gone farther with genetically engineered food. We start off here in 1996, and you only have about 10 acres around in the, around worldwide. Once you get to 1999, you see that there's 100 million acres of genetically engineered food. So. One of the, another benefit of the gen genetically modified crops is you can create a huge surplus of crops by using genetically modified food by cre creating clones of it. I'm going to show you a small video where you can see how, where this comes in handy. Being able to create a huge surplus of food is important because if you go into a third world country where a lot of people don't have food, you're able to make many crops, as here in this statement. They went in an experiment, they went to Nigeria to see if they could do that. By able, being able to increase crop productivity, they're able to offer hope to poor countries or poor communities by being able to supply them with food that they don't have. Look at the difference. You don't have to just keep making small amounts of, of crops over and over and over again. You can make bigger crops by genetically modifying them. You can see this corn compared to this one is way longer. So 
<coughs> so I want to go back into the history of genetic <coughs> engineering, the Dali experiment. This is when they first um, used cloning, and this is where they first actually did experimentation on a live animal or human. So what they did was they took a dead sheep that's been dead for over six to seven years, and they took its DNA, and then they cloned it. That's why this old man's here taking care of the sheep. And the next picture is going to be a little gruesome if you don't want to look, so don't get too crazy. That's the dead sheep that was dead for about six years. It was cloned. Yeah, it died. Yeah, six years ago. So, and when they cloned it, it came out as a perfect sheep. You see there, same exact sheep, same exact physical traits. Maybe not the same memories or the same thing stored in its brain, but it's something that become, that might be beneficial in the future if you need cloning. And I'll get into that here with the organ printer. Being able to clone something is important because there's a lot of people, for example, like me, who needed to have surgery. And when you're able to clone, either if it's a person, it can be an organ. Here they take a stem cell and they encode it with your DNA. And with that, they take that cell, multiply it, and divide it, and then it becomes an organ that you need. Instead of having to wait years or months to find an organ that can adapt to your body, you'll have the same exact organ that you had when you were born with, except it can be, um, it could be more efficient in your body because they can modify it so then it can work better for you. That's just here telling you exactly what it is. It's not, it hasn't been done yet. They've been working on the organ printer, but they're still working out all the bugs, but it is an effective way having organs ready for patients that need it. I'm gonna show you a picture. It's a little funny, but that's the vision of it. <laughs> they're having, they have the surgery, and what happens is the organ will be stored in here after it's made, and it'll just, it could be lungs, it could be a heart, it could be eyes, whatever you need. Okay. Now the question is, is it, is it right or wrong? So a lot of people, for example, Greenpeace International, they go against genetically genetic engineering because there's fears that if you're changing stuff that's supposed to be all natural, Maybe you're playing God by creating another human, or creating organs, or, cre or changing children. And it's something that a lot of people feel really close to, and they don't want that to happen. For International Greenpeace, it's an organization that was made in 1971, where they were a group of activists. They're against genetically modifying crops, because they fear that if you genet genetically modify organisms or crops, it's going to integrate themselves with organic ones, natural organisms, and produce new forms is something that's going to be cross-species, which is going to change the natural flow of evolution. But where are we now? The, in 2000, the U.S. spent $17 billion just to go on medical research on genetic engineering. And what I think is, just like Isaac Asimov, that the, advancements, the advance of genetic engineering makes it quite conceivable that we will begin to design our own evolutionary progress. And when the new technologies become available in the future, it might be something that will happen. Well, we're doing wrong. That's more exciting.